This is a Takamini uh, electric acoustic bass. There's the model right there. And uh, it's got a bit of a problem. As you can see here, I've already taken off the bridge and I'll talk about that a little bit here. But the problem exists here. So I'll put a little straight edge on there. You can see where you've got a pretty serious bellying behind the bridge and then it kind of tilts the bridge a little bit uh, toward the sound hole. And you can take the straight edge this way a little bit. You can kind of see that gap in here. Um, so what I'm going to try to do, as you see here, um, the bridge is wonderfully installed can see where basically it was you know here it is here it was epoxied right on top of the finish and all those scratches under there are real heavy scratches in the finish and basically what they were doing was kind of toothing it up a little bit so that you had a little bit more uh, bonding surface uh, for that crappy epoxy that they used to install the bridge and then there's two little pinholes here they also had two little bolts there um, so I'm gonna try to do a couple things and what I'm gonna try to do is number one try to make a bridge doctor if you know anything about the bridge doctor Stu Max sells them it's a way of trying to flatten the belly of the top now it doesn't ever claim to be perfect um, but it kind of works similar to like a sound post in a violin um, so I'm going to give that a try. I'm going to have to make one specific to this model um, because the Bridge Doctor is just not going to fit this size. So I'm going to try to tackle the, the arching that I have here and a little bit there and hopefully I can get this angle down a little bit. Um, then I'll see if maybe that needs reset which I really don't want to do. You never know, I think, on these imports, how these are made, whether there's actually a dovetail in there or whether they're just slapping them together with epoxy. I just don't know. But you see how bad that is done. I can only imagine what that is like. So I really don't want to take this neck off. So I'm just going to start here, and we'll see what happens. Quick update. There's the bridge with finish scraped off and it was a horrible experience. That epoxy, it has to be epoxy finish. And it is just on there so thick and it's just so difficult to get off. I, I don't even want to go through uh, the effort that I, I did. Probably better that I maybe should have just left it alone. But I didn't. It is what it is. Okay, so we're all glued up and uh, you see a couple of things uh, interesting here. I have two bolts uh, behind the bridge saddle and that was the original holes uh, from the construction of the, the guitar itself and I just put bolts in there and screwed in wing nuts from underneath and uh, that's serving as really really good clamp pressure actually um, and I've got two clamps on the outside on the wings and it's really down pretty nicely um, the strings that you see there um, are old but I didn't have any extras and you see how these kind of get all coiled up and whatnot whenever you take them out of the tuning gears and I really didn't want to fight with it and pull them back through uh, the bridge so I just left it on there so that's why that's on there um, pretty soon once that's dry I will put this crazy looking contraption in there and I'll explain how that works when we come back So the bridge glue up, turned out great, uh, no problems at all, it was actually probably one of the more painless glue ups I've ever had to deal with and those two bolts made it happen. Now for this thing, this is my version of the Bridge Doctor, the Bridge Doctor is a little device to help bellying um, acoustic guitar tops that Stumac sells. This is a little different looking than that one. That one is certainly not going to fit this guitar. 
um, because remember it is an acoustic bass, Takamine bass. So you see there where I've got two little threaded inserts and it's just your ordinary hardware store variety, those little brass things that actually never go in straight. They're always a little on the crooked side, but I think I can make this work anyway. Um, I wanted to use those because the bridge doctor tells you to you know, drill a hole and it goes straight in the middle, like in here. You know, um, and I've already got two holes drilled, so I really didn't want to drill a third one. So I've got those actually going into two threaded inserts. And then this block here goes right under the front edge of the bridge pad. Um, and the reason, so I should say the reason why this is so large was because of the uh, two bolts here and how wide they were. Um, but having it that big also meant that I had to fit it through the sound hole. So I had to kind of take a hand plane and edge off those corners. But uh, this little rod here is a tensioning rod. It goes up against the sound block. This here kind of holds that tension in place. And uh, we're going to see how this puppy works. All right. Here is the straight edge uh, just behind the bridge and you see where on each side you've got some little wood shims there on the base side it's like I think 105 thousandths um, and then on the treble side it's like 135 so it, it's bellying way too much for my taste as you saw it earlier in the video so I am going to try to crank this down and see if when we come back you got a little bit of a gap there in the middle where this is flattened out. Well, it worked. Worked pretty well, actually. Um, just want to show you here. You can see I put a little, a couple of feeler gauges there. Um, I put a 30 and a 35, and it's still even a little, you know, not enough to fully fill that gap. So, I mean, that's, you know, 65 thousandths right there and plus a little bit more um, so you can see how that top definitely flattened out and right where it's at I'm actually kind of happy with the way it's reacting at the moment um, I have a straight edge on the other side here to kind of show how that kind of flattened out you can see just a little bit of a gap there um, but compared to what it was before oh, it's it's a lot better so, and the bolts being the way they are, um, for now I'm just going to leave it like that instead of covering them up just so that I, I know that this is working well if I need to take it apart or something like that. Uh, if it were a customer's guitar, I probably wouldn't do that and I would fill the holes and send it on its way. But the customer is me on this one, uh, at least my school. So, and underneath here, you can see... Where that little rod is. Let me get this ruler out of the way. Okay, there's my little tensioning rod. Sorry, the pickups thing is in the way. Um, I'm just going to leave it like that. It's a little long, but I'm not real worried about it. Um, like I said, if it was somebody else's, I'd probably just take the time and cut that a little bit shorter so it was a little less visible through the hole, but I really don't care because uh, it is mine. Um, but there's the block sitting on the brace that's the tensioning rod. Um, once you get that tension in place, I mean, you can really crank these screws down. And, uh, I mean, you don't hear any pops or cracks in the wood or anything like that. It just it went really smoothly. So, the Bridge Doctor apparently works, and even my version of it. So, here's the finished product, strung up. Um, originally, I was hoping that this would work and help alleviate some of what I think are neck reset type of adjustments. Um, doing the bridge like this with the homemade bridge doctor and a good a truss rod adjustment um, definitely made this a much more playable bass. Uh, so much so that I'm not even going to worry about a neck reset because like I said it's just a s instrument that we use in my middle school. I'm not going to get that crazy with it. I think I've been crazy enough already. Um, but it's a much more playable bass. So it worked. Thanks.